Africa, listen to me. There's a generational cry out there, a generational cry of absent fathers. I say no to a society that is stripping godly men of their authority. I say no to any media that is driving a wedge between husband and wife and father and child. I say no to lethargy, that spirit that is causing men to neglect their responsibilities. I say yes to a generation of men who are turning back to God that is led by the Holy Spirit serving King Jesus. I say yes to communities that are raising sons that will honor and respect their elders. Africa, Fuka, the time is now. I say yes to restoring the Father's voice. Amen. Hi everyone. My name is Apostle Stay Stage. I welcome you on my stoop. The name of my stoop is Restoring the Father's Voice. And today, we bless the Lord that He is doing a great thing in our continent, Africa. He is transforming us. He is bringing men back home. He is placing us back into our position as He intended. Today, I love my continent so much, and I send the greetings. In my language, we say, Saubon. I just want to love my people in a mighty way and say, Jesus is restoring the Father's voice. He is bringing that voice that is missing in our families. He is dealing with fatherlessness in a fatherless generation, and he's restoring fatherhood. I want us to come along as he does this with us. I want to call our fathers all over, right where a father is in the earth and right at home to say, God loves you so much. God wants you to do something for him. God is giving us his mandate and his purpose while we are here on earth. He says, first of all, acknowledge that there is an internal purpose for you. There is something you came here to do on earth, and that is discipleship. God is calling the fathers to know about discipleship, master discipleship, be part of what he's doing. He's saying to us, he has also given us the universal earthly purpose that we should just go through. And I want to quote just three of them. One is, first of all, the first great commandment is to love God. It's found in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37. In the NIV, that whole scripture there, it is helping us understand how to love God and why we must love Him. He wants every father who's going to serve Him here on earth Love him wholeheartedly. Everything that is in you must just love God. Love God in such a way that people can feel you. People can know that there is God in this man that is with me right now. And when you can love him, you will love him in such a way that you can love his people. You can go all out and pray for others and do all these things that only a man from God can do. I know there's a difference between man of God and a man from God. John was a man from God. I want every man to know that you are a man from God and you need to love him so much. That's the first commandment and that's the greatest commandment ever, to love him. The second universal purpose about men is that men, according to John 13 verse 3, up until 35, man is called to love one another or love other people. You can never love other people if you don't love God or if you don't know God. Any man that can love is a man that has met up with God, that has gone out to love God, and now you have the opportunity to love somebody else. You will love your wife because you know it's the right thing to do. It's something that is from God. Some of these spouses that we marry sometimes, we don't even know them. We know how they were brought up. We don't know if they ever brushed their teeth the right way we brush the teeth. Some of the people that we are staying with today, you don't know how they were brought up, but God teaches you to love them anyway. And this way you will know that you have met up with God because the person you're living with there at home is not perfect, but God has made you to have capacity to love that person, 
to take that person to the next life. And you are God in that house as soon as you love another person, starting with your wife, then your children, then the people in your community. As you continue loving, you will love people that you don't know from other nations. And that's what God is calling men to do. He's saying, as you acknowledge this universal purpose about your existence on earth, you're about to change the world. The third thing is, God is giving us the great commission in the book of Matthew 28, from verse 18 to 20. And he says, as you acknowledge the great commission, the great commission is about building his kingdom. When you build his kingdom or establish or advance his kingdom, that's when you take his kingdom to the next level. That's when you know that God dwells in your life, in your heart, and that, that way God is also, you know, going out from you to your wife, to your children, and then God is enabling you to take up some of his mandate to reach to other people, to do other things in ministry, and to advance the ministry in different ways. We will talk about that when we deal with the services of the Lord. But your role as a man is to identify a space where you could advance a kingdom of God at some point. Meaning shifting just from a church mentality into kingdom mentality. Moving outside your church and doing things for your church only. And start doing things for other churches and other people. That way you are kingdom minded. And that's the space I believe God is calling us as men to roll out. And the last part in the universal purposes is that God is also giving us the cultural mandate, which is found in Genesis 1.28. The cultural mandate is that we are here to reshape the culture. We are here to bring about Christ-like culture. We are here to build a culture of God. In Africa, everybody has a culture. Everybody is doing their own thing and they call it, this is my culture. But there is a culture of Jesus that we need to bring and establish upon our children. When your child enters the university, first year at university, this is what is said at Freshers Freshers Party. They then tell our children that you don't have to believe in your parents' faith anymore. You are now at university. You found now liberty. And any child who did not grasp the culture of Christ at the early stage at home will miss it at this point. But any child that heard about Christ-like culture, uh, taught at home about this culture, that culture will never leave the child. People can do whatever they do, that child will stay with the culture of Jesus Christ. And that's the, 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 the universal mandate that God is giving men. But the last part is the personal ministry that God is saying there is a personal purpose of men that men must also acknowledge. In the book that I want to read today, I want us to come along as I read uh, in the book of Philippians chapter 2. We read verse 13, and it reads us. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. It is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God is working in you. God works with you. And God wants you to know that there is something that he has given to you personally. There is a personal ministry that he wants you to partake in. He wants you to know about. He wants you to put a life purpose statement about you. In fact, any man who don't have a life purpose statement that is personal, a personal life purpose statement that you are accounting to someone about it, you have taken it to some people to watch you roll it out, then you must know that the enemy will always come in and steal from you, steal your time, toss you to and fro because you don't have a specific ministry or a specific mandate that you're doing. God wants to work inside of you. He wants to do things through you. He wants to roll out his purpose through you. So if you allow him to do that, the next scripture is also here in the book of 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11. In the NIV, it reads us, each one should use um, whatever gift he has received to serve others. You need to do that faithfully, administer God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. 
If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, power forever and ever. Now, if any man is going to speak, he has to speak as an oracle of God. He has to speak as a prophet of God. You need to know by the time you open your mouth, words come out and those words can either build or destroy. So you need to know how to use the words that you are using every day to other people, to yourself, and do those words prophetically as in it was God speaking through you. That is how God wants to work with us as men. God wants us to be the prophets of our households. He wants you to speak the things you want to see happening. You don't speak negativity over your children. You don't speak negativity over your wife. You don't even say your wife um, has gained weight. You don't say those things. You are just fine. You just, uh, when you see she is gaining a little bit, you just say, baby, you're doing just good. I just like how you are getting portable and good for me all the time. And, and, and you just enjoy. You call that thing that is not happening at the time, you call it as if it's happening. You say to your child who's not doing well at school, my child, you are doing well. At this point, I want to share a personal testimony of my friend. He told me that when he had 50%, just 50% of a passing mark at university, his daddy asked him, did you do your best? And the young man said, Daddy, I did my best. And the father said, if this is your best, I'm removing you from the university. And this young man said, Daddy, give me a chance. He went to prove himself, but then he went overboard. He studied too much. That thing affected his life at the later stage. He couldn't now cope with his family because now all he had to do since that day, he had to prove to his dad that he could be the best lawyer ever. He could be the best student ever. He then couldn't be the best father he was supposed to be at home. So I want us to see what is it that we're saying to our children. When you see your child not doing well, don't penalize him, don't destroy him, don't say to him, if this is your best, I'm removing you from something you like. Just continue encouraging and prophesy and speak well. Know that that's your purpose in that house. So as you do this thing with the Lord, God is saying, now, I want you to sit back and plan your life purpose statement in this fashion. Life purpose statement is you need to know what is it that God said to you and what is it that the Lord is propelling you to do. And when you know that, write it down. Then the next part is that what is it that is already in you that can assist you to do exactly that. Let me give an example about my life purpose statement. When I discovered that I had a wound of a fatherlessness spirit that I have experienced, I've decided to take the very wound and turn it into ministry. Today, I am healing many other children who are coming from fatherless space, who don't know what to do in life. I become the healing balm to them because I come with my personal testimony. And it's easy to pick up something that is already in you and write it down and then take it and get the trustee. Today I have a trustee called Restoring the Father's Trust. And that trustee a group, these are the people that are keeping me on my toe, making sure that I deliver, I go out, I go preach this message as I'm supposed to preach it. You need to account to someone. Once you've got your life purpose statement, give it to someone. Give it to your wife, let them know. Let your family know about the plan God gave you. And when you run with this plan, that plan is going to be the plan that God start taking it to one level and another. And that way, doors will open. So as you go home and sit back and say, Lord, please teach me. I want to know what is it that I, as a father, came to do here on earth and start looking inside of you the stuff that you have experienced, stuff that you went through in life that are so difficult. And as you redress them, as you come out and you become the activist around that, that becomes God idea as opposed to good idea. So at some point we need to know there are some good ideas, but there is a God idea. This God idea is already part of the package of how he packaged you. 
when you put that personal ministry together, that personal ministry is the ministry that is going to start taking you from one level of glory to the other. It will be the ministry that gets you to minister to God every day. You minister to one another and then you build his kingdom based on the space he gave you. That way nobody competes with you. That way people that has gone through a similar space, they will start getting healed and they will find their life purpose and they will continue moving from there. And that's how God is now catching up bringing and restoring his world back to him. I'm sitting here, I see a reformed Africa. I see the Africa that is healed from fatherlessness. I see Africa that is beautiful, the Africa that is changing the world. I see the Africa that is a bread basket to the whole world. I see the Africa that is so united. Even now, as we are watching the World Cup, we are seeing Africans coming together, rallying around one nation that is playing there. Even when all African teams are out, we are still looking into another African team like France that is having many African folk in it, and we see ourselves also participating. And that's how we, 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 we can come together. Sport will bring us together. God will bring us together. There are many things that will bring us together, but in this case, the church is supposed to be leading this revival. It's supposed to be bringing all of us together to build a nation no one has not seen before. And I want to talk to someone at home who is saying, but Apostle, I don't know how to put up a life or rather a personal life purpose statement by myself. Believe you me, I can help you. If you WhatsApp me, if you talk to me, if you connect with me, as um, uh, we go on, you will see at the end of this program, there will be the details on your screen. Pick those details up and just ask for help and say, I want to put up my own life purpose statement and out of it, I will take it across. I will present it to God. I will present it to my family. I will present it to my friends, I will present it to a trustee, a group of people that will make sure that I do this thing as God intended me to do. That way you will see that God can also use you. In this case, God is calling everybody. He is calling every man here on earth. He says, I have given you something. I gave you a seed. You are a seed carrier. Check this one out. In the book of Genesis, we see there was Adam and Eve. And if ate this one particular fruit that they were not supposed to eat, when if ate that fruit, nothing happened. Everything was fine. Until late in the evening, when Adam came, when the man ate that fruit, the entire system went down crashing. Why? Because this is the specific species that was not supposed to step out of the line. Because a lot has been given to you. You are important, man. You are a seed carrier. You don't have to eat anything. You just need to know that you need to just go back and reconnect with the creator and take that mandate as created. And that mandate is the mandate that is going to make you to be a world changer. You are going to be this agent that God is using mightily, starting from your family into your community and go out and change nations. I want you to know you are important. I want you to know that God is saying, my men, I have sent you here to carry my covenant. A covenant is something very serious. It is something that God has made an agreement with you. And he said, man, I want you to be me down there on earth. I want you to rule the earth with me. I want you to subdue the earth with me. I want you to control everything, all animals. You don't have to run away when you're in the zoo and you see a lion and you run. No, you are supposed to know how to say, hey, Lion of Judah, stay right there. And the lion should hear you and understand you. If you go back to God, you will start seeing, you can command things. When you are a covenant carrier, you can do anything. I remember one personal testimony that a flight was about to, to, to leave me and, and, and my driver wanted to rush. I said, don't rush, drive the normal speed. And I just opened the window. I commanded SA363 to wait for me. And the flight waited for me. 
if I am a human being, I could just tell a flight to wait for me. When I got to the airport, they told me, sorry, Sam, that flight has been delayed. I smiled and I checked in because I knew I'm the one who delayed the flight. I got inside the flight and while I was inside, I forgot that I delayed the flight. And then I remembered, wow, I need to release the flight now. I then sat again, seated inside the flight, SA 363, take off. I want to go to Cape Town now. And, and, and after I said that, the captain said, ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way. And as you can command things, as you can call things, as you can practice at home, you know that there is something of God in you and that thing will take you to do great things. I want you to know you are important. I want you to know that God has a purpose, eternal one and the earthly one. And your personal purpose is the one God wants to walk with you on it. I want you to know that uh, you are of service and uh, he wants to do great things to you. He wants you to know about your roles. He wants you to know about the service. He wants you to know about the love. He wants you to know many things. He wants to to know about the time, the places is giving you to go to. So as you know these things, your life is about to have a meaning. And this is what we're doing here. We're trying to get every man to know that you mean something. You are important. You're not gonna die on this continent. You're not gonna die on us. We need you so much. We need you, daddy. This world needs you. And if you believe that somehow, maybe you missed that you were not in the right path with God or you missed just to know that there was this universal purpose of God about you to love him, to love others, to build his kingdom and to know at the same time that he wants you to bring his culture down. If you had missed on that, I want to pray with you. I want to tell you you're not late. I want to tell you that God is saying you can still come back. He will still use you. In him, there is no age. In him, there is no beauty. There is, there is nothing like you have to be wearing a suit or looking smart. You can be anything. If he could raise me from the street as a street kid, smelling glue, he calls me and he brings me to this space to reach out to you. Surely God wants to change you as well. He wants to transform you. And I want to pray along with you. If you are in Christ, please don't condemn yourself. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. But if you are not in Christ, you may just pray this prayer with me and just say, Heavenly Father, I come before you. I am a sinner. Please forgive me. This day, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my spirit. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my spirit and lead me. As you pray that prayer, Jesus is bringing you into a space where there is no more condemnation. That way you cannot be condemned. Nobody will condemn you once you are in Christ. Once you are in Christ, there is a second chance. There is another thing that God will just bring you into speed. He will just restore the years that were eaten by locusts and kanga worms and caterpillars and fast forward you into the future. I want you to know there is a Christ who is alive and this Christ is reaching out to you. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless this continent. He wants to transform this entire continent. He wants to bring Africa to be that place that the world will look up to. And I am the catalyst. I am walking with God as he comes to transform my continent and my people. I want you to be ready for him. Open your heart and know that he is in charge. I want to release that blessing upon my continent. I want to release the blessing over each and every dead out there. And I tell you, daddy, you are beautiful. You are smart and you are highly favored by the Lord. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. And I want to tell you now that don't ever condemn yourself or look down upon you. I had to leave school because other kids teased me and they told me I had a big head. And I didn't know that I could have just said that head is the one that is making me bright at school and I'm absorbing more and more of all the teachings because of a big capacity of the megabyte in my head. So I should have enjoyed my head. And I want you to enjoy yourself and know that there's something great in you. Somebody's going to like that. As I continued in my life, when I met my wife, there's the first thing she said, you have a good, beautiful head. 
I imagine my children looking like you and all of them. They look like me today. I just want to tell you that God loves you. Africa, stay blessed. Till we meet again, same place, same time. I'm Apostle Stay Stage and I'm the son of the soil and I'm releasing a blessing to you. And I say, be blessed, stay blessed and VUCA, Africa, VUCA. You are next to be transformed. Amen and amen.